up guys, welcome back to Field Trips. So I have made it down south in the Keystone Cougar, my home on wheels, down here for winter with my second family, the Moore family. If you follow the show, you know these people, Max, Chris, and Heather. We are back at San Luis Pass near Galveston, Texas, where we spent last Thanksgiving. We're here to do a little red fishing. We're gonna have a good time. We also have a celebrity guest this time, Miss Jennifer Lampkin, Southern Bell Fishing. Look her up. She is quite the bass angler, but she's pretty new to redfish. She's caught a few one time out of a boat, but today she's gonna do it. She brought her outback down, her Hobie outback, and we're gonna take her out in the marsh and show her how we like to catch redfish up the shallow. And this girl definitely knows what she's doing, so I feel like she's gonna pick it up right away. You ready to do it? It's gonna be a good time. We love this place. We know this place. Got a little wind today, but it's not as cold as we were thinking it'd be this time of year, so should be able to find some fish. We'll see what happens. Good man. You been finding some? Nice. Hop it. Hop it? I'm hopping it like constantly. Constant. Like like this. Three pops and then just like reel down. Three pops and reel down. And that little that little second where you're reeling down is letting it fall and hit the bottom and then you pop it back up. So it's still power fishing, you know? It's still your jam. Just a little bit different. Just that slight pause in between to let it hit the bottom again. Because also what it does when it hits the bottom, it makes a little mud cloud. And if you watch like a blue crab in the water, it's making a little mud cloud behind itself the whole time too. So it's, it's like natural. They'll follow that little mud cloud trying to see what's making it. So letting it hit bottom is pretty critical. Got him. There we go. Fish on, first fish today is redfish. Little guy. Hey, buddy. Look at the blue tail. The little ones always have these pretty blue tails. Boom. Mark that guy in the angler out. First blood. It's a little red, a little rat. Thanks, buddy. I love going up trying to teach someone a new way of fishing and actually catch something so I don't look like a total idiot. Oh. I think I just spooked one there. Oh. realizing that I'm just being stubborn and I'm trying to catch them the way I want to catch them rather than the way that these conditions this high water kind of dictates we need to catch them I'm thinking I just wanted so bad to get you on some sight casting action but there's just too much water it's just too deep 
by the time I see them, I'm spooking them. Yeah, I think we should do it the easy way and do that. Throw the popping cord around these mouths. Oops, sorry about that. Booty bump. Uh, I think we should just commit to the popping cord in the gulf. Like I took mine off because I don't like catching them that way, but Max got a small one on the popping cord. And I just think with all this water, we just gotta lure them to our lure rather than just hoping we pitch something right in their face. Yep. There we go. There's something. A little redfish. Just a little guy. Hey Bobby, you get one? I hear your popping cord shaking like the trout. It's a little rat red, yep. I heard it. <laughs> How'd you catch yours, Bobby? Yep, uh, popping cord. Just like bass fishing, any points like this with the grass, and really it can be as subtle as like a little like two foot jut out on a long, huh? This? Yeah. I was doing that around. Yep. That that like really right there, you could throw that, throw that and just pop it a few times near that end. The redfish will just hang out in those corners. Perfect. Those redfish will just hang out in those corners and uh, wait for something to come by. Give it a good pop, like nice and hard, like pretty aggressive. Yeah, that exactly, exactly. Oh, uh, and see with that little pocket behind that point, that's, that's like a money area. Just watch that thing. If it goes under or starts moving to the side, set the hook hard. There it is. Yeah. There it is. Nice. Jennifer with her first fish. On the popping cork. Look at that. It's a monster. Jennifer's first redfish from a kayak. Yeah, you can let the little ones, it's not so bad. Yeah, I don't see anything. It's gonna take my finger off. Nah. Nice work. Yay! <laughs> I've had to work for it. Look at that. Nicely done. I love it. Good job. Okay, I need a selfie with Okay. Look at that. Look at you. You're natural. Yay! All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so nice work. It's yeah. not been easy. It's been no, a grind. It's been. Nice work. Thank you. Oh, no. You did it all yourself. I didn't do anything. Did you? I mean, like, stay cast this way and it just happened. Well. Be a slot, red. Oh, oh. It's gonna be pretty close. 19. Wow. Well, that's big redfish of the day for me. One inch shy of a keeper. Oh, dude, the second it landed. What is that? Oh, a trout. Wow, 14 and three quarters. Quarter inch short of a keeper. We all got experience doing this. It's her first time. And she's showing the boys how it's done right now. This little underslide. I love that blue on their tail when they're young. It's pretty. Nice work. 
I feel silly now giving you advice. You're out fishing us all. You'll be fine. Nice work. Nicely done. <laughs> yeah. Small though, man. Where are the big girls at? Feels like a trout. Oh, it's a flounder. I don't think that'll go 15. Got flounder. All right, first flounder of the day. Got to be 15 inches, and I don't think so. Not even close. You ever seen one? Pictures or something. So they're born with an eye on each side, and not long after they're born, one eye migrates to the other side. They kind of live their life sideways, sitting sideways, but like perfectly camouflaged. And they got gnarly teeth. Don't lift these guys. See you, buddy. They've actually got joints in their mouth, like four of them, so they can open up like twice as wide. Yeah. Pretty cool. First flounder. That's three or four species today. Just can't find the big fish. I don't know what the deal is. You'd think just statistically by now we would have caught something in the slot. <laughs> nice, dude. dude. That's my first ever top water red. Oh, no, really? Yeah. Nice, dude. Oh my gosh. You were like, oh my gosh, red just hit my you my line. Top on yours? Yeah. Oh heck yeah. And then uh, dude. <laughs> then you just set the hook and you had one on. Nice work, bud. First topwater red, that's a cool little milestone. Oh yeah. Beauty man. Awesome. Nicely done. On a tough day. Oh yeah. Look at that, Heather just got her first one of the day. A little red fish. She's gonna measure, see if it's a slot. Looks like it might be under, but. 15 inches. That's a Louisiana keeper. Nice. If there's one there, there's probably more. And look at this, you got another one right away, back to back. <laughs> Heather's killing it. Nicely done. So if you're fishing the marsh in a kayak, which really is the only way to fish this kind of marsh, you couldn't get a boat up in here. Uh, you need a kayak you can stand up in. This lightning, lightning kayak strike is really perfect for this. It's super stable. I can stand up all day. I can stand on one gunnel. Day like today, really for catching fish, sitting down is probably going to be more effective because it's sunny, water's relatively clear, and it's shallow. These reds, they're just spooky in these kind of conditions. And so standing up, you're gonna spook them. But, especially early on in the day, I like to stand up anyways, because even spooking a redfish, if I can confirm that it was a redfish, that gives us some information, right? We, we figure out kind of where they are, maybe what they're doing. And if you spook a redfish, you wanna kind of look around and see what it was. Was there oyster nearby? And, and kind of learn about what's going on, what, what the fish are doing today. Redfish, redfish. Just spoot, just spoot the red out of the oysters right here. Look at no that. Way. Oh my goodness, what I say about the spook. I got that on video. What I say about the spook. Daytime. Nighttime, cloudy, sunny, they will hit it. Oh man, that was, what an aggressive strike, dude. Get your, yeah, get your, get your spook ready, buddy. That was first cast with the spook. Top water red. It feels, feels like a slot. 
It sure hit like a slap. Oh. Now he's here. Oh! <sighs> Trying to horse him. Trying to horse him. Oh my gosh, it's okay. It's okay. That was so sick. I ain't, I'm not even mad about it. I am not even mad about it. All right, guys. Well, I was telling Max that with all this shallow oyster, it's kind of hard to work a plastic through it. So I told him the spook might work, and he was saying, you think so, even on a sunny day? And I said, I think they'll hit the spook any time of day, any time of year. And there it was, the very first cast with a spook. First cast with a spook, and that fish exploded on it. Got him. On the spook. Definitely a slot. Oh, not again. Did not come off. Not again. No. Please, no. Oh my gosh. There we go. Now we're on to something, ladies and gents. I'll let her swallow it pretty good, so she's in there pretty good. Yeah! Nice, dude. Ding that girl in the angler out right there in front of me. Oh my goodness. Look at this, you guys. Not only have we developed the pattern here, but it's about the most fun pattern you can get. She choked the spook. Just inhaled it. I let her eat that one for a second or so. You always want to let them take the top water down. And that one did not get away from me. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Look at that. Oh, that was sick. Man, when they're hitting the spook, you guys, you'd be hard pressed to find me doing anything else the rest of the day. I'll snap a quick pic for the angler app, including of the bait. Oh yeah, that's a good time right there. So there's all these mullets, the sight casting is kind of out of the question. It all looks like redfish, so I just said, forget it. I'm just gonna throw something that I know a redfish will kind of seek out if it's hungry. It'll, it'll come to the bait instead of having to try to get the bait right in his face. Man, she choked it. There it is, y'all. It's actually not a spook. This is the skitter walk from Rapala. I just call anything like that, any walk the dog action, a spook, but technically it's a skitter walk and it's a little bit smaller than the spook junior, which I like. And uh, it's getting it done today. The slot here in Texas is 20 to 28. Just don't want to let her go. Yeah, she's 24. Good slot redfish on top water in about, I don't know, eight inches of water, maybe. <gasps> it broke me off. It broke me off. And there's my spook sitting there. Just, just spooked one towards you. something else in here too but there she is let's get a walk I would like oh my gosh look what I'm spooking in here no oh man oh no it didn't break the leader it broke my main line my knot's still there and everything god dog it Yep. Yep. That's something. No. A crap. A big one. Look at this guy. Like hashtag world's largest crab. Look at this guy. Hey, that might have been what had mine. That is not what I was hoping for, and how the heck am I gonna cut that in half? You got pliers? 
Yeah. Golly. He's got to be big enough to keep. Mark that guy. Everything likes the bugs fishing lures. I'll see if I can get this off without uh, him getting me. There we go. See you, buddy. Man, he was. With a fight? Question mark. Yeah, he put up. He put up a little fight. I was so confused. Oh, and he snipped the dang tail off this thing. Aww. Not the bugs. So when I'm working the spook, it's a pretty simple motion, but it definitely takes some practice. But basically, you're popping the rod. You want a little bit of slack in your line when you're popping. And I'm kind of slowly giving it about a fifth of a turn with every pop. Just slowly reeling in the slack. And that's what you're looking for, that walk the dog action. Should be going back and forth chugging along now I like to give it pauses sometimes but today they're hitting it on the steady the steady walk and you kind of use your forearm here to sort of bounce the rod butt back and it kind of does about half the work for you kind of helps with wrist fatigue because after a while this will start start taxing you especially if you're not used to doing it this is one of the most effective lures and presentations in fishing I don't care what species it definitely takes some practice, but it is worth learning. Because it just works for everything. From redfish to striper to... You can use it offshore for pelagics. Bass will hit it. Anything that feeds on fish will hit this thing if it's in the mood to hunt up top. Another one of these ponds. Oh, peel and drag. Got to be a slot. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Definitely a slot. Okay. So I retied on the skitter walk after breaking off. It actually broke my main line. Oh, and I'm just slowly working up in these pockets, in these ponds. And that was the first cast into this pond. Just got up in here. Let's see if I can get this girl in the net. Oh. Oh. So strong, they're so strong. Come here, baby. Oh, still ripping out drag. Oh my gosh, the key to this to the spook to any topwater really is to let them take it. I waited a good maybe almost two Mississippi before I set that hook after it just disappeared. And there it is. This is red number four that I've hooked. Hopefully about to be the second one on the stringer. I've not been executing on all cylinders today. Oh, yep, and the net and the lure popped out. Oh my gosh. Oh, and she's straightened one of the hooks out a little bit with those runs. Goodness gracious, she's not even that big. Oh, she's straightened one of my hooks out right there. I'm gonna have to fix that. But oh yeah you guys now we own something this walk in the dog top water is just so fun and uh i think she'll go 20 22 on the dot that'll eat baby she will eat i mean i thought i had dead ended back there i don't know if you can see this behind me but i came up this super narrow chute because i saw there was a nice open pond and it seems like whenever we get out of that mangrove grass and back into regular kind of marsh reeds, that's where these fish are hanging out. Any pond like this, with this kind of uh, this kind of vegetation, they're there. Man, it's been a grind figuring this place out. Jennifer had to take off. But she caught a bunch of rats. She was having a blast. She's just a, a pleasure to have on the water. She's got such a good attitude. Now the boys are out here trying to get a little redemption after it's been tough and there's been some fish caught. We heard that uh, Chris back there has got, got a couple fish, a red and a flounder. Max has got one or two. 
and now I've got two. So we're gonna keep working up in here. Yeah, buddy. I feel like there's gotta be one around there. After that, make another couple in case that noise brings one in, you know? Cause it could be a little deeper in there, but that noise will lure it out. Just real slow, man. Real, try not to spook anything, but I'd work up in there after you make one or two more good ones. Bro, if that doesn't get smashed, I would do it right one more time, just like that. Because again, that noise may bring something out. May it'll lure something out. I'm gonna go wide around so I don't spook anything. That was perfect cast, perfect retrieve, everything. All right, I'm gonna get up into this next cut. Holler if you hook one. I mean, don't scream like a madman, but let me know. I'll try to film you from afar. Yes! Max, Max is on! There we go. Over the grass right now. Max is on. He said he cast over the grass, and it's going to be tricky landing this thing. He's way up in there. He's gonna have to like lift it over. He said he doesn't know how to land it, it's over the grass. He said it might be a bull. He's trying to figure out how to land this big old redfish with grass between him and it. Max is pretty crafty, I feel like he'll figure it out. There he goes. One hand paddling while fighting a big old red. Oh, he's going for it. I knew it. Oh, oh, looks like he's got it close. Oh, he's walking over that lightning strike. He's thinking he's going to get out of the kayak. Yep, he's still got it. Max is wade fishing on dry land, basically. Oh. <laughs> Got it. You get... Look at him laughing. Nice. Sick. He's giggling, can't stop laughing. Yep, yep. It's a rat. It's just a little guy. I knew what I'd just say. Some of this gotta be redfish. Not the size we're after, but that's okay. Man, he wasn't coming off. Just a little rat. Feels so fun on top of water. Another one, baby. <laughs> uh, it's a rat. It's a rat. First cast, though. Every time I come up into one of these new ponds, that first cast is just money. I think because they haven't heard it yet, they, they just cannot resist it. <laughs> Doesn't matter the size. They are just so fun when they're willing to hit the smash the top water. This little guy, she pretty though. Ding her in the anger app too. All right, looks like we got this system moving in. It's looking pretty ominous. There's no electricity in it, but that is dark. And that's gonna dump some rain on us. Might have to cut this a little short. 
can't believe I didn't get my limit. I should have had my limit and then some. Poor execution. But I'm not really trying to get my butt kicked by that. We'll give it about another 10 minutes. Work this pond. Just see if we can't scratch one more out here at the end of our, our window. There's that wind picking up with this squall line that just passed. It's a cold wind. I think we're gonna start working our way back out. Hit some of those ponds closer to the mouth. So if it gets nasty, we're at least not too far from home. Yeah, that cold wind, that's in that, that squall line. I'll put my rain jacket on too. This might get gnarly here. This high tide jacket from NRS. Love this thing. So keep my core warm and dry. fun in the rain all right guys well we ran out of daylight the storm darkened it up pretty quick I just cannot believe I had four keepers on and only come back with two but we got dinner we're gonna get in it's dark and I actually forgot a light I'm actually breaking the law right now you need to have a light visible 360 degrees uh, within 30 minutes of sunset here in Texas and in most states Luckily Max has got one, so we're just gonna stay real close to each other and use his. And I mean, every fish we landed was on top water, pretty much? Every single Every one, one of mine was, yeah? Yours too? Yep. That ain't, I only caught one, so. That ain't bad. <laughs> Good times. I only caught one, but it was like. The big one of the day. 